We're here with Dan McGuire, reality TV star. Dan, thanks so much for being here. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Yeah, so Daniel, tell us, I mean, how did you get into reality TV? Good question. Um, I was actually modeling in L.A., and about five uh, months later, I got a message sent to me on Facebook. Hey, this is either it was either the casting director or one of the producers saying, hey, you want to do the show, The Bachelorette? And I said, yeah, why not? Yeah. So five months later or three, four months later, um, that's when we started filming. And since then, it's just one after another. Um, so The Bachelorette led into Bachelor in Paradise because they're both owned by Warner Brothers or ABC. Um, last year, I did uh, Celebrity Family Feud, which is Warner Brothers. Uh, Paradise again, which is Warner Brothers, uh, mil Millionaire Matchmaker. That's because, I, and the reason I got on that show was because they saw me on Paradise and they just wanted to use me. Um, and then I did uh, Celebrity yes, sir, Bachelor in Paradise Australia down mm. down there, and they just sent me an email saying, "Hey, you want to do the show?" So one just led after another, and it's because <clears throat> I bring this entertainment factor, I guess you could say. Mm. and yeah it's just i've never been pitched to any of these shows i've never applied to any of these shows they just keep on asking me so um yeah it's been a good time i'm just waiting actually right now i'll find out probably by the end of this week if i'm doing another show in september i can't say what it is but um i hope to get it because it's mm. a lot of fun and uh make some money you know and go travel meet some new people having a new experience and you know get some laughs basically you know what was it like being on the bachelor i mean that's that's something that you know i can only imagine yeah it, it's you know before going on the, my first reality tv show i was kind of like you know one of my, I, I didn't know what to expect right. you know it could be super long days you could be super bored um it just could be frustrating at times but other times you have a lot of fun you're just shoot, you know shooting the shit with your friends or right. other castmates and you know you can see some new places and try have some new experiences so it can be fun at, at times as well but it's also cool sometimes seeing the finished product afterwards when you know you film all this and then months later you see it seen on tv and you'll be like wow i remember that or oh i didn't know this happened and then other times you're like, oh frick, why did they have to air that? Or you yeah, know, it yeah. kind of it depends on your edit. If you get a good edit, you're like, you love it. If you get a bad edit, you're even makes you even more mad. Um, right. But you have no control over that. You know, I've had good edits, bad edits, and weird edits. I've had all different types of edits. Yeah. Um. So my experience, for the most part, has been pretty good. And I mean, it depends on how you look at it. I mean, someone in the same shoes as me when it might have been like, no, that was horrible, horrible experience. But you know, just like anything in life, you can look at it positive or negatively right right so you know when it comes to the bachelorette i mean is do you think that do you think that love is possible i mean on the bachelorette where you have you know one girl and 30 guys the possibilities for the guys aren't good you know it's a one in 30 chance but then even then once you make it to the end you still have to make sure that relationship goes on or continue and so do I think it's possible? It is, but not the great chances aren't great because, you know, just look at how many couples are still together from how many seasons, right? Right. Um, you got to think of why these people go on the show in the first place. Um, how much time do you actually get to spend with the person? Like, for example, when I was on The Bachelorette in three weeks, I spent about 45 minutes with uh, JoJo. And so it's just, you know, not realistic circumstances. Paradise is more realistic. But even then like when i won the first show and i was one of the 30 guys and one girl like what happens if i didn't like this girl or mm. you know who, who is she i mean it's not like i'm picking the dream girl mm. to be there and i'm trying to win my dream girl it's just just some random girl you know so it's like it'd be a lot better chances if i was a bachelor and i had 30 girls to choose from but it wasn't just a random 30 girls it was girls that i wanted to be there or this is the type of girl i'm looking for because again if it's just 30 random chicks you know, it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to find the one, right? Mm. So uh, you just have to be realistic with it and, and uh, you know, kind of have fun if they can't, you know, take it that serious because, you know, there's other aspects to it. You can meet, make friends and you can have a laugh and have some new experiences. So it's just not, you don't go on there just for that. And nowadays people, most people don't go on it for just, you know, f to find a girlfriend, boyfriend. Most people go on it for fame or for followers. Unfortunately, mm. that's what it is. Mm. Did you, what did you think of The Bachelorette? Were you into her? um was i into the was i into her um i think it, it was hard for me to get really into it you know competing with all these other guys and i'm like first off i usually don't compete for girls i mean it's not it's not like normal everyday situation if girls doesn't like me then it's like hey bye you know and so 
it's like I felt like almost like I was faking it, like mm. trying to win because you don't want to lose, you don't want to go home. You're competitive, mm. right? But it's hard to fake it sometimes, and something like that, you don't want to like, you know, be someone you're not. Mm. Um, so, but she, yeah, she was cool. But I mean, not the type of girl like I would ever want. I wanted to marry. Mm. Um, but you know, what, when you're on these reality shows, like, what's it like for the relationship? Like having a relationship? Have you had a relationship while you've been on these shows? I, the- I've had some relationships on these TV shows. And some are, they last longer than others. Some are more serious than others. And yeah, sometimes it feel, it can feel like maybe a little bit forced, like that you have to do, be in it because that's what you're there for. And that's what all you talk about. And so you feel like maybe if the cameras weren't there and you weren't around them 24 hours a day, then maybe you wouldn't like them as much, but it's, 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 it's a mix. It's hard to, sometimes you get so caught up in it. Right. Mm. And you'll hear a lot of people say that they get so caught up in it. It's just hard to know what's the real, what's real and what's fake. And you know how much of it is for tv mm. and um yeah i mean some but i've never been in love on any of these shows and i've never been head over heels there are some girls where it's like it's cool but you know you live on the other side of the continent and do i like you enough to move there down there no mm. you know what i mean yeah yeah so tell us i mean what would be your favorite if you had to look back what would be your favorite show that you were on um my f- the favorite show was my favorite show that i've been on was probably season three of bachelor in paradise it was my first time it was my second show and my first time doing bachelor in paradise and it was just a lot of fun i was with a lot of cool people i had a lot of good laughs um i was on it for a fair bit um my edit was pretty good so all these circumstances made it made it good for me and made it a good experience i did get salmonella so that did suck wow so about day Day eight, I started feeling like I was going to die, and I felt pretty sick, and so uh, I had to take antibiotics, and so it kind of put a bad vibe on how I felt, but I still tried to pull through, and I was there for about 12 days, so um, that was probably my favorite show that I've done. Nice. Um, but I mean, when I did Millionaire Matchmaker, I was a bachelor, one of the bachelors, I get to pick a woman, so it was kind of cool to have that sort of power. Mm but what know. was it like working with patty like, like working with patty yeah i mean she, i didn't really watch the show before going down onto it but I had, I had an idea what the concept was gonna be like yeah but then you know when we're filming it and stuff i just you realize like how different different networks work and different producers work and you just feel like i just you know they wanted to be they wanted certain things that i didn't want to do and right. whatever and i just it was still cool because it was still cool because I was working with my f- friend Vinny. We were both the bachelors and we got to pick the women and I, we both, you know, she was a, the girl I chose. She was cool. And, you know, we ended up leaving together. Um, so it was a cool experience, but I knew how they're going to portray me or what they wanted to. And mm. so I was not too happy with that, but um, especially for the amount of money they're going to pay me. Mm. Um, how are you portrayed out there? Like in the um, reality world? Yeah, so every, every show is different. I think, sometimes they portray me as arrogant, egotistical, an asshole, um, cocky. Um, sometimes I'm portrayed as, you know, funny, weird, silly, witty. But again, we both, me and you both might watch it or say we, we, we watch somebody on TV and you might think they're funny, I might think they're an asshole. So just, it comes down to perspective, right? Mm. Um, so I've had a lot of people over the years come up to me and think, oh, like, you know, they come, I'd say 80% of people that come up to me like, oh, you're so funny. Da, da, da. Other people like, oh, no, you're a loser, douchebag. I'd say <laughs> not, maybe not that, maybe not 80%, but like maybe 90% think yeah, it's good. Yeah. Online is when you get more of the negative things. Right. But in person, it's usually pretty good. So again, it comes down to interpretation, right? Right. Are um, you ever like out and about doing things and people are like, oh my God, it's so and so? Yeah, get I'd that? say I probably, I've had that probably, oh, 20,000 times in my lifetime. Wow. So, yeah, that's the thing. So, it's, uh, before going on these shows, you know, you expect you're going to get some recognition and whatnot. Like, I, I expected that. And every, people go on these shows for that. I mean, everyone want, likes attention. And I, I'm not going to lie and not say I don't like attention. I do like attention. and But you don't realize how much it is until you go on these shows um, and just how many people watch these shows. So, I, you know, I've done six shows and I you get recognized in, in any city. So, not just Vancouver, like any city in North America. I've been in, I get, I've been recognized in any age. So not just like 20 year old girls, but I'm talking like 40, 50 year old men, six, mm. I've been recognized from any ages, probably anyone from 10 years to 70 mm. and guys and girls, husbands, wife, boyfriend, girlfriends, gay, straight, you name it, all types I've been uh, recognized by. And, um, 
any place too. It's not like you're just in a nightclub or whatever, airports, restaurants, anywhere you go. And, you know, it's usually you know, coming up and ask me, you know, say, you're, are you the guy from the show or Daniel, I know you, or I seen you on the show and mm. can I take a picture with you? So you do get a lot. And sometimes it can be overwhelming because it's just so like so frequent. So, you know, you might go a day without getting recognized or at mm. least you might go a day without someone coming up to you. But other days, you know, if you're in a nightclub, it's too much where you can't even hang out with your friends or you go to a sporting event where it's just like too much bombardment. It's just too much. Like, mm. you know, you picture here, picture there, and it's like a little bit too much. And Some of your single friends might like that. Oh, uh, right? yeah. Sometimes <laughs> the single friends do like it because then it's like they use me as bait almost. You ever um, get any of them pretend to be your manager? Oh, I'm Daniel's manager. Nice to meet you. Well, <laughs> no, they don't do that, but they just like, they definitely like the attention. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the, the friends like let's go tonight. I'm like no, because if I go out, it's not. It's like not just going out. It's like a more of like a you gotta be ready. You gotta be ready for physically and mentally to like be ready, to be prepared to like take lots of pictures and smile and be on. Because you know if you're not Mr. Friendly all the time, they'll be right. like, oh damn, he just goes online. He's an out. He's a douchebag. He's you know he's yeah. like this or like that, right? Yeah, yeah. So as for for us re reality TV people, you have to be. You can't, you mean, not, not saying you have to fake it, but you just, you just have to be, you always have to be your best self, right? Right, right. Because if you're Brad Pitt or whatever, and you're making millions and millions and millions of dollars, it doesn't matter what people think of you. You're going to get hired regardless, right? Right, right. What's next? You got any movies? You got more reality TV? Give us the rundown. Um, no movies, at least not yet, because I've never taken an acting class in my life. Some people ask. So they, they assume that I'm on either an actor or want to be one. And um, first off, I'm not an actor. Um, and I don't necessarily really want to be one. I do like doing reality TV. You know, I, I would love to have my own show one day or maybe co-host or something like that. Um, you know, I have d different uh, pitches written up and, but I'm pretty easy going. I, I would do just about anything. Um, but I am waiting to hear back about a TV reality TV show this week. Um, so that that's exciting for me cause I like doing it. Um, but as be besides reality TV, you know, those shows are not every day of the year, right? So you got everything's that fill in. So, um, you know, I like to stay active on social media. So I do some endorsements with that. Um, I've done appearances over the years at nightclubs, women's expos, fitness expos. Um, I do some personal training on the side. I've been certified as a trainer for 10 years. Mm. I've been doing a little bit less as years have gone by because, you know, busier and doing these sort of things and I come and go a lot. Mm. Um, and, but then I also work for a research marketing company that's based in Bermuda. And I do that part time as well. They're my friend; it's my friend's company. And I just, you want to do this? Can you do that? Can you work today? Can you do this? I say sure. Mm. Um, so I stay fairly busy, you know. Mm. Uh, but yeah, no, no TV shows yet, no. and no, no sitcoms. Oh. Um, I don't know if I could learn lines and do that. I mean, I'm sure mm. I could train my brain to do that, but mm. I just don't have a passion for it. You know, mm. I think any, people are like you should try. You would be good at it, but I don't have that passion. So mm. you know, I have a passion for reality TV and being myself or uh, something something of myself because i can play it up and i mm. feel like i'm good at that and improv but i have no passion for the rest so i think you should only do something that you have passion in. you know i agree i agree tell us a little bit about your fitness routine i mean you're in great shape i mean give us the rundown on the supplements the training and you know what you do yeah so myself the way i train right now is a lot of it's for looks obviously i like to be aesthetics so you know i'm always almost like preparing for like a fitness competition, like mm. a physique competition. Um, Cause I, th I think the human body is amazing. And I like want to sculpt it. So um, I've been working out, you know, on and off pre or pretty much on since, I mean, my whole life, I guess you'd say I'm 33. So um, I started maybe more serious in 2004 and every year I get more serious, less, a little bit less drinking, but mm. um, less, a little bit less drinking, yeah. a little more serious. Um, and, but then I got on a motorbike accident yeah accident so that sent me back a little bit well wow. so that was in 2013 um so i think about in i've been steady now about for the last five years though um so i'm in the gym you know six days a week mm. um i love it though as people say oh you know six days a week so I, for me it's like i look forward to going to the gym people say some people are like let's go the, the first thing in the morning to so get it over with i don't mm. want to get over with i want something to look forward to i go sometimes twice a day um uh yeah so i go for basically a lot of it looks but also um, you know, for my heart health and cardiovascular. So I do do that as well, but I'm not training right now for like a sport or to be the most explosive man out there or the most flexible. I'm going again, mostly for looks to call me vain or whatever you want, mm. but you know, you want to look good in the mirror, right? Mm. Uh, I still do a lot of, you know, I do, do, do cardio. I do go for hikes. Um, so my cardio is still pretty up there. And plus the way I train is high, high volume. So 
I'm doing right now a three-day split. I'm in, hitting, hitting everything twice a week, and I'm doing about uh, 13 exercises per hour and 15 minutes, and about uh, and then four sets and a drop set for every exercise. So it's super high volume with about 45 second rest. Nice. So it's almost like a cross, it's almost like a yeah. circuit training, but it keeps my heart rate up there and it keeps me pumped up. And it's just what works for me. I'm not saying that works for everyone. And some people say maybe you're overtraining or you're doing too much. And I just find like, that's what works for me. I like this because for, for me doing just chest in for an hour, I can be done chest in 25 minutes really right. with a five minutes per exercise. So, nice. and then supplements. Yeah. I love supplements as well. I'm a huge believer in them. Mm -hmm. Um, I take them for a variety of reasons and I, some are more important than others. So, you know, I have my basic stuff. So it's just like, you know, you know, my, uh, pr obviously the best is probably a, a creatine or protein, mm. um, probiotics, digestive enzymes. I've, I'm taking a little bit break from multivitamin right now, mm. but, um, uh, f fish oils again a f new study came out said it's not that important so mm. I might stop taking that vitamin D vitamin C uh, greens Q10 turmeric ashwagandha so I take a whole variety of things um, I like to say all natural like all from you know natural clean ingredients mm. and I don't say I've never taken a steroid in my life so I want to continue be being clean like a clean athlete right nice nice have you used any of our products or? yeah i've used them all supernova is the best though yeah supernova i love supernova i haven't used it though for a couple months um because that's last i sw i've tried different brands but i don't like to mix as much i find supernova just gets me like boom it's great uh the protein and stuff are good uh the same with the bcas i've tried the bcas before they're tasty as well but that supernova is just like it's probably my favorite pre-workout out nice. there great that's good um, to hear. yeah so yeah, no, I'm willing to take some more if he throws them my way. Oh yeah, no, we're definitely, we'll hook you up before you leave. That's not a problem, yeah. The reason why I'm so passionate about supplements is just because I know how important they are, and especially for me, like I feel like in this day and age with the amount of pollution out there, I mean smoke, with the other amount of stressors, and the, 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 the lack of uh, vitamins and minerals in our food from them over over um you know spraying them from pesticides herbicides um from you know they're coming in from south america from asia by the time they're on our plate they're not nu nu nutritious plus the way i train i train very hard i train you know once or twice a day i push my body to the max so i want to make sure i'm getting you know the right amount of nutrients or supplements and so you know i find that's why i'm passionate about it because for me the most important thing in life is health mm. if you got health you got nothing mm. you can't go to work you can't go hiking you can't have sex you can't perform great in many different areas so for me i want to feel as best as i can and i find i can do that with supplements if i can spend ten dollars a day on supplements which i it's about that what i do so 300 bucks a month whatever but ten dollars a day what's that's two starbucks or you know mm -hmm. less so I, i'm willing to do it Mm. And so for me, it's like, I totally preach it and I don't push them. I don't push down on anybody, but I say, this is what I believe in. This is why it works. And especially for me as a natural, natural athlete, people often accuse me or they think, yeah, I'm taking, you don't take a thing. No, I just, cause I train hard. I train smart and I eat healthy. I get my sleep and I take my supplements. Mm. And so you do all those things that works, you know, but mm. I'm not going to take shortcuts. I don't want to look less in a way. And I mean, that's not for me, not saying I have a lot of friends that do take steroids, but that's not for me. Mm. And I find I'm able to do, I get, I'm able to get the way I want to look naturally and with the proper amount of supplements. Great. I mean, you're lucky. You're one of the lucky few that have these genetics. Honestly, it's pretty Yeah, rare. but I, it's funny though. I mean, so I mean, obviously genetics are part of it. Like my family is kind of an ectomorph. We're, like we're all fairly slender. It's hard for me to put on muscle. Like right now in the mornings, I'm like 192. Wow. Um, but again, I am in the gym six days a week for as many, like I don't, you know, I don't party much. You know, I see these guys, I, I train with guys that take stuff and I leave them in the dust. They're just, you know it's i've been training for a long time and so i find you know it's not just gen x i just because i just train myself hard and i've learned what works well and work what works doesn't you know i find you know for me i push myself hard but i also lift smart you know i see these guys are swinging the weights mm. they're doing partial reps like you know like this they're not squeezing they're not doing, doing it properly so obviously you're not gonna get proper results so then you know they want something to get them to where they want to get so they got to take something you know it's but if you do it right in the first place you're not going to get any injuries and you'll get there real way because then things if you stop taking stuff you kick you often will come off it pretty quick mm -hmm. and these guys too now i'm talking to them a lot of these guys are taking gear 
they got internal problems and all the time like oh i got this and i'm like what do you think that's from and i know what it's probably from like oh it's it's probably just genetics or uh from maybe stress and i'm like okay <laughs> or they've got mental issues as well yeah because a lot of them they don't do it i'm not saying that you know you can't take gear in the right right way mm. you know i'm not saying if i'm 40 or 45 and my test levels are low i'm not saying i won't take it but a lot of these guys just overdo it over t- and take too much stuff like you know these guys are like some of these guys are 25 years old and the amount of stuff that i'd hear them taking i'm like dude your kidneys your liver your adrenal glands by the time you're 35 40 you're gonna be done and then the day i would say teach your own whatever makes you happy you know <laughs> you know I agree. Did you have any questions for us or myself while you're here? Like anything at all that comes to mind? Um, well, how about this? What makes Nutribolic stand out from other supplements? I would say, you know, what makes Nutribolic stand out is that we we put clinical dosages in our products. Everything we have is transparent. So like, you know, you as a consumer, when you're buying our products, we're not hiding anything. You That's can, what I like about yeah. you guys. Cause I've seen some of them, it's like a blend or a proprietary blend. I'm like, yeah. what the heck does that mean? And yeah. how much am I getting this? Cause I want to know exactly if I make sure I get the right dose. Cause I need this dose to get that, you know, to reach that's what it's supposed to do. Mm. Number two is I want to make sure I'm not overdoing it as well. And, and that's, I mean, for us, I mean, we're all about, you know, getting results for our customers. We're all about hearing about the performance increase. You know, I love hearing stories about, you know, people that have really like how passionate you get about supernova. Right. And for us, I mean, we believe in repeat business. You Mm -hmm. know, we want people to get results. You know, like my goal is, is that, you know, if I'm out there, you know, I respect the competition. I try the competition, but when we put a product out on the market, I want to be able to sit across from you and say, this is better than anything on the market. Well, I've taken a lot of different supplements out there and a lot of different pre-workouts. And for pre-workouts, Supermover is definitely the best. Thank you. Um, there's a couple yeah. other ones that are close, but doesn't yeah. do it. Yeah. And, uh, and I'm one of the most honest guys you'll ever meet. And that, that is a tough category. It Let is. Let me it tell is. you, that is, not is. A, that is a very, very tough category yeah. to play around in. You Another know? thing I like about yeah. Nutribolics is that it's Canadian and it's yeah. local. Yeah. You know, it's not made in some foreign country no. or some small hillbilly town in the States somewhere that you used to, eh, maybe mm-hmm. not. It's in Vancouver, you know, it's like, look at the headquarters here. This is, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And so I trust it, you know? Yeah, yeah. I know that it's not going to have some sketchy chemicals or sketchy products in there that are going to do damage to me, you know? So yeah. it's, a, it's a product I can That's trust. Exciting. For me, fitness and health is the most important thing. So supplements goes hand in hand. So that's why I'm so passionate about it. That's why it's like when I find something I like, you know, it's... Yeah. I, and I tell people always ask me, what's your, what's your favorite pre-workout? Nutri- Nutribolic Supernova. Well, listen, thanks so much for joining us. I really well, appreciate it. Me. Yeah, no, honestly, thank you. Yeah.